Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Raygate Lake and of course this is episode number 26 of Real Up My Park From Scratch. Thank you so much for coming along, whether this is your first time or whether you are a seasoned regular. Absolutely love every single one of you coming to see this episode. And this is the episode I thought that I was never going to get to be able to make. I honestly thought this project would tank far before we got here. This is the big one. This is the finale. After this, there is only the touch-up episode and the release to the workshop and with the final tour. And then that's it. It's Raygate Lake put to bed. And if I'm honest, I think I'm ready for it because it takes 32 minutes to autosave and 89 minutes to save the park file. So I think I'm ready to start a project where I can get my frame rate back. But like I say, this is the big one. This is the one you've all been waiting for. I'm not going to dilly-dally about this. Um... Because this is this is a special episode and we just need to get straight on with it, right? So last episode, this is what we were doing. All of the back, back of house stuff, we were building all of the offices and the warehouse space and everything. Uh, and also at the front of the park, we just did the staff car park and also the staff entrance. Uh, so it was the facilities management and we were talking through all of that. So then, what's coming to this area? And I mean, it's probably the worst kept secret of the entire series. I've been sort of dropping hints for the last couple of episodes. Did you manage to pick up on any of the clues? They were here, here, and here. Oh, there was also here, 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 and here. And there's also this little beauty at the end of the Phase 2 tour. Phase 3 finale is going to be an RMC T-Rex. So it probably won't surprise you to see that we welcome an RMC T-Rex to Raygate Lake. And I'm so excited about this. Like, I've kept this a secret, but I've been dropping so, so, so many hints over the last couple of episodes. I'm surprised that nobody really picked up on it. Um, yeah, so I left the Phase 2 tour with the bombshell that we're going to be putting the R RMC T-Rex in. It was no surprise to anybody that that was going to be the case. Um, I made it very obvious, very clear, and I wanted that to be an Easter egg right at the end of the video, and that's what card agreement was all about. You've heard me say it a couple of times and probably missed it and gone, what's he even talking about? Um, and then, yeah, over the last couple of episodes, I started to drop in all of these hints, and particularly in the office one, like that was the big one when it was on the wall of the control room. It's on the wall of the meeting rooms that Titan is going to be the name of the T-Rex and then all the screenshots as well nobody noticed that I'd actually put right in the bottom corner that episode 26 was an RMC T-Rex nobody noticed it and it was so blatant I did it in so many screenshots so anyway why an RMC T-Rex well Raygate Lake as you already know has this really clever portfolio of rides it caters for a lot of stuff already like we've got the sheer drop coaster over at the Eurofighter we've got the inverted coaster we've got the spinning coaster uh, we've got the wing coaster we've got a wooden coaster we've got stand-up coaster so they've got the, this profile of very unique I easily identifiable roller coasters and there's obviously one massive gap in that portfolio and that's the brand new single rail coaster um obviously there's no flying coaster and stuff like that but that would count towards the inverted one right this was the obvious choice given that this would be this year's ride this would be the newest one and why did i choose the rmc t-rex well they don't exist in real life so this gives us a bit of an opportunity to have some fun with reggae lake because everything's been so focused on this ultra realism ultra high detail park that i wanted to just let the imagination loose now i've seen some design specifications for things i can't talk about but i've seen some design specifications for the single rails both the interman and the rmc ones and i wanted to do a coaster that kind of touches on what you don't see in a park every now and again and i've tried to build in as many of those elements as I possibly can. And I've also used Railblazer and also the Jersey Devil coaster, is it? Um, Jersey Devils? I think that's what it's called. Um, as the inspirations for this. So let's take let's take a tour. Uh, so we're going to start in the start in the station. And I've just boxed out um, an area that I wasn't going to build because I knew straight away that I wanted this to interact with path pathing and station and everything a lot more than uh, the other coasters did. So I've just boxed this out in terms of height and everything. Uh, so the first thing is we come around the, the first bend and the beauty of RMCs is they, they throw the rule book out the window completely. Like they will have turns that are unbanked and they will have overbanked turns and they'll have uh airtime hills that have got banks on them and oh they are just a beauty to like build because you can throw the rule book out and you can just build whatever so this is what we've done first turn banked ever so slightly as, as you enter into the to the brake run and then into the lift hill 
and then the first drop. Uh, obviously, I need to do some work on the supports and everything just to make this a bit more real in the same way that I did with the uh, wing coaster and everything. But first drop, 90 degrees. Um, I was a bit dubious about doing this because we've already got a 90 degree, 90 degree drop coaster, but I thought, actually, you have you have parks that have got multiple launch coasters and stuff so it's not uncommon to have similar elements and stuff so yeah 90 degree drop into the first shallow uh, ejector airtime hill these are really really common um, and you see these also on the hybrids and everything as well and then into what i call a reverse signed sidewind or an immelman signed i'll start that i'll try that again an immelman sidewinder um so there are design specifications for the Sidewinder to go this way, in the sense that it does a bit of a, a, a ribbon effect. The majority of them would actually come in this way and come out the other way, so it doesn't actually fully invert. But I wanted this one to have that to have this effect, so it actually fully inverts round and then back out towards the left hand side. So I've I've done that I've done that deliberately, and the shaping is just about right for that. Um, and then we come into the parabolic airtime hill. Uh, B&M use these quite a lot on their hypers and gigas. Uh, so it's this idea that you have a smooth ascent into a sharp ascent, into a smooth camelback, into a sharp descent, and then a, a smooth descent down. Um, and then RMCs tend to use this quite a lot. It's like a, it draws out the G-forces. It enables you to reset your g-force levels before you enter something that's intense so you do, you have a moment of like downtime almost but it's still a moment of excitement because you've just got this this bottom end of the hill and it's the way to, to stop those really positive downward g-forces uh, from like to overtaking this this part of the ride because then we go into the typical stall the zero g stall where it actually inverts really quickly on the ascent enters 180 degrees overcomes that crest at 180 degrees and then uh, inverts back very quickly on the descent again as well but with this one i've put it round a corner so it almost does a bit of a corkscrewing effect around the end and again this is where i love the fact that rmcs can throw the rule book out because the uh, single rail track is so versatile it enables you to do that so uh, I've come out of the zero G stall and then we're coming into the turnaround um, they borrow very much the, 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 the ideas of the turnaround from um, B&M. So you will either see that this bit is either more drawn out as I've got it here or it would enter slightly higher and this bit's more drawn out and it goes over the top. Depends on the speed of your coaster. And then I also then wanted to start to bring in some of the other elements that are favoured on the uh, hybrid coasters that, that you see. And they, those are the real overbanked wave turns. So I wanted to have this wave turn where it goes really overbanked, 90 degrees, round a corner, uh, taken at a high speed. And then from this point on, the coaster is quite low to the ground. And that's the other part of the RMC that I wanted to borrow. So I wanted to get all of the main elements in first. And then I wanted it to go low to the ground for the remainder so that the two halves of the coaster are completely different to each other. They, they offer completely different ride experiences. So we go wave turn into zero G. So these are uh, heartlined, but not particularly too heartlined. So uh, heartlined, it's only one meter uh, that I've used here. Um, heartline roll into another wave turn, but it's actually a snaking wave turn. So you go into the turn, into a full 90 degrees up, down into another full 90 degrees in the opposite direction, and you do a really quick transition and that's the thing with rmc single rail coasters if you ever watch the videos of things like railblazer and whatever they throw you around they really throw you around the track like i've watched them and thought oh blimey that's pretty intense like they're supposed to leave you with that idea of going oh my god what the hell just happened uh, so yeah the sp the snake bend uh, the snake bend wave turn um and again, it's low to the ground, or I've kept it as low to the ground, high speed as I possibly can. And then into the into a, another um, ejector airtime, but this time it's banked. So it's banked outwards. And I was careful with this to make sure that I had my banking where it was uh, right, left, right, left. So it's quick succession of being banked either way. So it's a bit more comfortable and it throws you around. Think of the same as, uh, is it Sky Rush? Where, no, it's no Sky Rush, Sky Rocket. Which way? The blue one, Kennywood. Uh, skyrocket I think it is at the end where you've got all the swooping s-bends actually icon at Blackpool does the same it's probably a better example to use right uh, where you get all of the snaking 
at the end. So that's that kind of theory. So it comes round here, uh, back round this way, and then into the opposite banking again, and then into the opposite banking again as it goes uh, through the the reverse Immelman sidewinder, whatever you want to call it, and then into a double up. Um, because they all, they, most RMCs seem to use a double up because you can get some really awesome pops of air, air time uh, on this bit and this bit. And then I noticed as well on some of them that the RMCs have block breaks at fast points of the ride that are on crests of hills. And that's what I've done here. Like this in real life would probably be a trim break, right? To make sure that it's hitting this block break as, as quickly as, or as uh, an appropriate speed. Um, then it comes into one final ejector airtime hill and then into the brake run. And then through the brake run, you then have uh, back into the station, and then you've got your maintenance on this side. So that's it. That's the layout. That's Titan. Um, oh, I'm so excited to put this in the park. And that's how it looks on the skyline. It's looking so, so, so good. Design-wise as well, I wanted to make sure that it looked good on the skyline where wherever you're standing, because this is an awkwardly positioned coaster, wherever you're standing, I wanted there to be something to look at. So in this instance, you're seeing the... Well, you're not. You're seeing a tree. Um, let me just... Let me just rectify this. <laughs> so with this this view, you see the turnaround and you see the wave turn. You also see a bit of the first drop and you see the zero G, right? So that's pretty, that's all right. And then from here, you're seeing uh, the first drop, the zero G, the parabolic camelback airtime hill. Uh, and then from this side, you're then seeing the first drop. The, the end of the zero G, but the, the starting of that wave turn and also the inverted in woman's sidewinder, uh, the reverse in woman's sidewinder. Um, so yeah, like you get a different view from wherever you, wherever you look. And that's sort of gives a bit more scale to that coaster. It gives a bit more, this is actually a bit more of an out and back than it, well, it's not, it's very much not an out and back, is it? I mean, look at it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it gives a bit more like impending scale to it. Now I did, I want to put the ride shop here and I actually nearly slipped up when I was doing the episode for the flat rides I nearly said that this was going to be a shop uh, but actually I've decided I don't want the shop to be there I want it to be here instead um, because I wanted this plaza area or I wanted you to have to walk through the G zero G uh, into a, a more plaza -y type area where you join the queue and you, you go to the to the gift shop and everything so that's what I've done I've done that instead it's a bit of more of a, a, a bit, bit more of a dead end so anyway I'm going to shut up talking now, now that my excitement has just subsided and I'm like, oh, I just need to build. Uh, so I'm going to carry on building. And the next thing I'm going to do, I think, is the is the station and, and queue line. So let's see how that turns out, shall we? All right, then. So Titan's starting to get an identity. It's starting to come together. Uh, and this last update, I've been working mainly on the station area, on the maintenance area down the bottom here, the gift shop. And you'll also probably have noticed that I've done a little bit of custom supporting as well. And I'm starting to pull together how I want this coaster to feel, how I want it to sit on the landscape of the entire park offering. Um, and I kind of came to this conclusion that Titan would probably be a bit of an identity crisis. They would have spent vast amounts of money on this coaster because it's it's rare it's unique it's marketable as like a world's first or a rare coaster but they didn't really put much thought into how they were going to install it into the park because they wanted to do it quickly unlike project x where it's kind of got a bit of a story it's got a bit of a theme it's it's, it's thumbed together as two different themes but it's it's got something going for it whereas i wanted titan to feel like it doesn't know what it is like this coaster could have been a flawless coaster it could have been it could have been anything really but it's it's a single rail coaster and so when we're dealing with rmcs there's no real real life precedent set for an rmc single rail i mean we've got the raptors but they're single seater in a in a line right so it's difficult to know what an, a, a t-rex would look like in real life so what i've had to do is take the design principles from the likes of the the b&m flawless coasters the intermans the max of the world and also had a look at how the raptors are pulled together but the rap knowing full well that the raptor track is very much uh, thinner it's very much lighter it's very much smaller scale than the than the t-rex track but that's where i kind of got to this idea of doing the custom supporting now the supports in planet coaster for the t-rex are actually pretty spot on um i mean it looks like from the raptors that the the actual supports are more of a lattice style a bit like arrow used to with their coasters uh but 
I'm not going to get some of the concept art for the T-Rex because the track is chunkier. It needs to be more B&M style uh, supporting and that's kind of what I've gone for. So the Jersey Devil uh, coaster has got this kind of setup for the lift hill uh, support structure. So that's kind of what I've done there. I've borrowed it. Uh, from there a little bit and strangely it's only supported on one side so this is going back to that principle that we were talking about in the wooden coaster with the you only support your most vulnerable side and that's what I've done here this is on a side of a hill right so you want to support this side um, and then I've just put this structure at the top because that seems to be how the raptors are all topped off uh, so it just felt like the t-rex would probably follow that follow that as well but like i say there's no real world precedent set at the moment and that's kind of good because it means that we can use our imaginations with this sort of stuff as well we can do things that we wouldn't normally necessarily do um likewise then i've just tidied up the supports so because i'd used the four meter method i did have supports every four meters I just need to do this bit in the middle here but obviously i need to do that when i do the scenery uh, but the actual um, the rest is is all done. So this is now pretty much how the Jersey Devil in Immerman looks, um, along with the the Camelback Hill, the stall turn, uh, the the stall zero the zero G stall, the turnaround and everything. So the supports are probably as good as we're going to get. I could custom support the entire thing, but I don't think I'm going to get supports that are going to look as good as the in-game ones. So this is going to be one of those trade-offs like we did with the with the wing coaster. We go, do you know what? Good is good enough in this instant. I've just done the, the custom supporting where it's needed. And I've also added some supports as well. So like this one, I've just doubled up with the same principle of wherever you've got lateral G-forces, you want to make sure that you've got uh, some kind of support going out uh, an angle as well, just so it can absorb some of those shocks. So, in terms of the rest then, the maintenance area, I, I need to do loads and loads and loads of detailing, but this is the general layout of the maintenance area. I wanted to have space for the uh, what could be four trains, but this is only going to use space, only going to use two rails. And then the rest, obviously, I just need to make all of the detailing and everything. I mean, need to make this look like a maintenance area. The station area, this is very much like Fury inspired. Um, Fury 325, it's got that sort of like angular approach to it and I wanted an overhang I didn't want just a plain station this time I wanted to create a bit of an overhang and I created two overhangs and then realized that this one here in the middle is an absolute <laughs> nightmare to do <laughs> like I sat there for about an hour and a half just failing miserably every single time of doing the actual roof as well and then I realized it's actually much more simpler than I was making it all you do is you set your roof piece to be in line with this top piece but at the same angle as this piece so all I did in the end was I just put a roof piece that was right out here at a 90 degree angle and then moved it down so that it was in the right position and then just copied it across like it turned out to be way simpler I over engineered that that roof massively um, but yeah I think this is this is quite nice and I'm just starting to put those like little touches like the T for Titan it feels like the park would do that, you know, it's a bit cheesy really, isn't it? It's that identity crisis thing, it's like, is it a superhero coaster? Is it a generic coaster? Is it, what is it? Like, what, what's what's going on? Um, and then I also wanted to have this element of the cladding, because this brickwork needed to be broken up. I, I didn't want to leave the brickwork as, as exposed, because it just, it looks awful, I think. So, I just did the, like this cladding, and I, I think it's actually turned out quite nicely. It's, um, just gives a bit of sightline difference, that's all. Then I've also put in the wheelchair access already. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had that strategy. I've learned by my mistakes of getting to the end of a build and thinking, oh, I've not thought about wheelchair users. Um, so I've done that straight away uh, and made that fit the area. And I started the queue line as well. So I wanted, I've always wanted this idea that the queue line was going to come up in between the buildings and there's going to be a flat roof that attaches the maintenance shed with the with the main station building. Um, I've checked out the legalities in the UK about this stairway and it's absolutely fine because you've got refuge points. Um, so you've got no more than 16 risers in one particular thing and then you have a refuge point. Um, I know there are some documents out there and we, we spoke about it in previ previous episodes about there having to be a change in direction. Um, but I've checked it out with some of our internal documents and it's fine if you just got a refuse area refuge area refuse is something very different um so yeah i've, I've just made sure that that's that that's there and then i decided i'm going to put the the cattle pen queue underneath the station because we've not done oh no that's not the cattle pen queue that's just the station uh because 
that's uh, not something we've done yet. So that's kind of what I've been doing in here. I started to do this element of real janky cue, this idea of trying to be modernist artistic, but looking really quite like jank with it. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find some more videos to put on the walls because it feels like multimedia would play a big part of this. It's a, it's a new it's a new coaster, right? So it's gonna be fresh and, and brand new. And then I just need to put some more detailing and stuff in in here along the walls. But this is as, probably as cold as I want it to look. Uh, you're gonna sort of enter into here and it's gonna be a bit oh underwhelming because there is no real theme. It's very generic. And then coming over to the queue line area. So I decided uh, in the end that I wanted to put all of the areas where people and guests can actually see. Uh, you've got the whole idea of the queue line fences and they're all sitting there quite quite nicely. But then where there's not so much attention, then it it turns to that really cheap, nasty queue line fencing that, that goes to the back. I don't know whether I'm just going to continue the fencing through. I don't know how I feel about this yet. I need to see how the rest of the area comes together first but definitely inside the building is going to have that that janky queue line fencing that's that's going to that's going to stay uh, and then inside the main shop um there's not really a lot that's that's going on here obviously you've got your photos that are going to be on the left hand side and you've got your gifts and stuff that are going to be right right in front of you and then it just needs cluttering out and decorating but i've just started to make sure that this is how i want it to sit on the landscape i've ended up making it four meters narrower um because it just didn't feel right it felt like this gift shop would probably be about the same size as the station so that's kind of what i'm going for uh, plus as well if it's smaller if it's narrower you get to see more of the coaster behind it um so that's kind of what i'm what i'm going for here and then i've just started to plan out how uh, people are going to get in and out of the area so you already know how this is going to work i've just laid down some paths so that it's usable in planet coaster and then i'm going to come along and cover it off so it looks like one big uh, one big area so you're already familiar with with what i'm doing here um and i just want like the the, the name of the ride to be painted onto the floor like we did with centurion Bear in mind that Centurion uh, Project X and this coaster would have been sort of put together around about the same time. So they would have been in quick succession of each other. So they would have sort of been feeling quite familiar familiar with each other, similar to each other. Um, so that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, I'm just going to carry on building because I'm on a bit of a roll now. So um, I think the next one I'm going to do is probably the penultimate update, actually. I think it's it's starting to get to that get to that point. Um Let's see. Let, let, let's see how much still needs to be done. All right. So, yes, this is going to be the penultimate update because I've done loads of detailing elsewhere and it's all starting to come together quite nicely now. And I'm starting to get to the point where I really want to pull down the fences and put down the paving and making like those final changes, do the terrain and do all of the planting and, and everything. So I'm going to show you around what we've got so far uh, because it's really like as I am players with how it's how it's taking shape. The first thing you're going to notice is how bright and vibrant everything looks like the whites are white and i've not used a washed out gray the yellows are yellow and the pink is proper pink and just in case you hadn't quite picked up on it this is their brand new ride this area would have only just been finished so everything would still be pristine it would still be shiny it would still be new the wrapper's only just been taken off stuff and i want to convey that in this build and that's why everything is a more vibrant version of the colors that you would normally see so just in case you hadn't picked up on that so that's why this like white is almost garishly white and the concrete is garishly clean um because like i say this is this is supposed to be the new the new area right so let's do a quick tour as you already know that my process this is the the paving area um, i'm just starting to get this this ready uh and it's sort of getting getting to the stage now i've added some more paving and everything and i've sort of reconfigured it slightly and then we know already what the outside of this is going to look like so the gift shop has had quite a lot of work done to it, it still needs a few final touches um but yeah it's had quite a lot of work to it it now reflects the station it's got a lid it's got a roof um and i've just put all of the signs and everything up and now it's got all of its tat inside and we've got a photo booth, so the photo booth has got everything that now needs in it, apart from its staff and its photos and the actual screens. But this is pretty much how I want it to be. And then coming over to this this side, um, I wanted to keep this open. Um, I almost toyed, actually, with the idea of having the top bit open because this top bit is open. So the actual shop itself is supposed to feel more like a... A container type shop you know they've just plonked it there because it was it was cheap and nasty to put it there there's no real reason not like um the 
curse of Drakeford Manor where the shop is very much a part of the actual ride experience and so it, it had to match this I wanted this to feel a bit more a slap down shop you know uh, just to give it that that idea but I'm actually really pleased with how this has turned out because the colors and everything are, are sort of like they're, they're contrasting quite nicely um, and then this canopy as well I've seen this in design briefs and everything that we've had for some of our previous stuff we've rejected them but this unsupported canopy i wanted to bring this i wanted to bring this in um as you saw in the in the previous update and everything so uh, yeah so the shop itself is coming on nicely uh, the colors well, like i say they're supposed they're supposed to pop because it's all it's all brand new the area just needs its final details and terrain and plants and stuff adding around here so coming over to the queue line, I decided to swap out the fences in the end. Uh, so I've made the, the cheap fencing on the inside, but the outside is, is all now the consistent fencing. I just, I felt like it needed to be consistent. Um, I started to put the concrete and everything down to start hiding all the lines to make sure that it's feeling right and it's sitting right on the landscape. So uh, this is good. I might consider putting some queue covers in here, actually. Um, don't know. Because I haven't used queue covers elsewhere, so it doesn't feel like this would need it let's see what the trees do let's see what the trees do i'm just sort of think freeballing thinking out loud now uh so i've added all of the catwalk clutter uh the lights the cctv the um electric boxes and everything that you would find and then also at the bottom of the lift hill i've also put in the concrete uh padding as well and also just some electrical units uh, so that's now complete as, as i as i want it to be I've done all the fencing around the outside of the ride as well, so this is now all ready. It just needs its ride signs, so it needs its danger keep out signs and everything putting up. And I've also done it right the way around the entire perimeter of the whole ride as well. So I just need to put all of the beware signs and everything around here. And I've made it dual. It's a dual fence, so not only have we got a park perimeter fence that's along here, we've also got a ride perimeter fence as well. So just in case somebody does manage to get into this area, they're still protected by a secondary fence. They would have to climb two fences to be hit by the train, and that's, you know, the stone's stupid fault. <laughs> um, yeah, so then inside the actual queue line itself, so underneath the station, I've done some touching up in here. I realize that this is an accidental thing but i really like it this on the wall is actually the other side of the paneling that we've done the gray paneling and i can't move it without detaching it from the building and stuff i actually quite like how this is how this has come through so i've kept it i've decided to keep it it gives it something a bit different to look at in the sight line um, and then we come in and i've just added uh, some like mako inspired stuff this is sea, sea world mako where they've got the beams uh, booms inside the actual queue line so i've just decided to keep that in as well um just put that in just, it just breaks up the space a bit because it just felt like it was very cold and it's supposed to feel like it's cold i said that in the last update but it's not supposed to be characterless so i've just added that in just to give it a bit of life there's two of those so it now feels like the queue is broken up into quarters rather than into into halves added some clutter and stuff along the wall along here added the signs and stuff um, I still need to find some kind of video and everything to put on the on the screens and then it comes into this way here added in a fire exit um, obviously this building itself would need to be evacuated in some capacity and then we go up the stairs that way and then it comes up to the actual station itself so this this paneling um, I just decided it was there the last update but I didn't really talk you through it I just wanted the paneling to break up the white wall a little bit so I've put them either side um, truth is it's actually hiding some of the curbing from the from the pathways <laughs> don't tell anyone it's our little secret uh, but the paneling actually looks really good it gives it a bit of this break point between the actual brickwork it, it actually does the same as this this gray paneling right just breaks up this stark brick because if i if i had kept it this is what it would look like and it just looks this is fine for a maintenance shed but for an actual guest experience it just looks pretty pretty rubbish so uh, i just put this paneling in um and then inside the actual station itself then so i've put everything that it needs to have so the ride up booth is now in so that's got all of its clutter and all of its stuff that it needs so there's a phone in there and there's a bin and and litter trays no that's for they're for cats uh letter box letter trays oh i those things that you stick paper in <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna re-record this um 
Now you've also got the package hold as well, so that's all on the on the back side. And I've just put some signage and everything in the station. And then you've also got your push points as well, ready for the staff to ready for the staff to go in, and also your emergency evacuation uh, signs as well. They're, they're they're all up. Added in some wires and cables and everything for the lights, so that's now fit. I just need to do some tidying up. You can see the bits poking through and stuff. So just some tidying up in here that that needs to be done. But otherwise, I'm pretty pretty chuffed with with how it's coming together and then underneath the station there's just your usual clutter that you would find so you've got uh, your electric boxes and just a, a bit of maintenance stuff going on and talking of maintenance if we go through the wall here we go we're in a main, we're in the maintenance area so this is the, the idea of two track um, i wanted to break up the wall the interior wall a little bit so i just put some posters up you know same as we did with the office the office space it doesn't really serve much purpose uh, just wanted it to feel a bit more of a fun space the other side now has windows just needs the glass uh, adding in but I wanted to make sure that enough light was natural light was coming through um, and then I just finished off touching up all of this all of this bit as well um, and I, I made sure that this was like a, a netting you know like the walkways the mesh walkways that you get it's quite important that you saw below uh, you're going to get quite a lot of stuff in here and I also wanted to have the ability for them to be able to dismantle the, tra uh, the trains and then bring them down uh, so this is why this middle bit is empty because then they can bring a crane in and, and they can just lift the trains off the track and then take them off on a flatbed. And then on the lower floor, just spin round. There we go. So on the lower floor, you've just got your usual clutter going on. There's no real, uh, there's no real order to it. It's just loads and loads of bits of clutter and stuff. And the walkway, obviously, along this way. I've not put any um, fencing along this walkway, by the way, because you would be stopped by the actual track and the idea is you'd only be on the walkway if you've got a train here anyway you wouldn't stand much of a chance falling off here but I'm actually now I'm sort of looking at it from this angle I don't know if I might actually put some fencing in here I've said that it would be okay but I think it we should do it again let me see how that goes uh, don't you just love people that design things as they're talking to you right it's like hello you're, talk you're talking <laughs> So, and then on the outside, uh, all I've done here is I've just put the um, final touches then to the actual, uh, to the transfer track. It still needs its push point. It still needs its electrics and everything adding in. But I've managed to sort of shore up this area quite nicely. It's now, it's now a lot tidier than it was. And then the last bit to show you is just over here. I've started the process of making this ride fit this uh, Cursor Drakeford Manor area. So obviously this is where I now need to start breaking down the fence and making all of the foliage and the planting and everything as it should be. Bringing back all of the uh, concrete and everything along here, making sure this is all clean and, and touched up. So last bit then is just going to be the bit in the middle here uh, it's going to be a bit more of a, an entry sign like we've got the curse of drake Grimana. i want something in here and have it a bit more plazery so that's what i'm going to do um i think that's probably actually pretty much it for this uh, for this update i think i'm just going to carry on and uh, i will see you for the final one all right then guys so titan is done it's complete it's come to life with all of its vegetation and foliage and it's actually a little bit sad because it now means that raygate lake is done it's just got the final episode to do where we just pull it all together and put it on the workshop and i don't know how i feel about it because titan's worked out really really well it's the perfect pinnacle to the series it's the brand new coaster for this year it's all looking new and shiny and everything's all still pristine and it's lovely but it sort of marks the end of the series, really, and it's a bit like, oh, bittersweet, if you like. But anyway, let's do what we're here to do, shall we? Uh, so let's have a look at the ride. So there it is, just going over. Um, so I've just put this uh, centerpiece in the front here. It f I wanted it to have a bit of a Fury 325 feel to it. It needed a centerpiece. It needed to have that focal point of, of walking in. And they wanted, they would have wanted to use the Centurion principle of having uh, this sort of like entrance plaza area where you can draw guests away and they, they only come into that area for one thing and one thing only. So I like as well that it's ended up being a bit of a mess of supports. They've, they've sort of sat there and thought, well, we can't really put this pavement through cleanly. We're going to have to just sort of weave it in between all of these supports and i like how that's uh, how that's turned out so it's like 
a forest of forest of orange and orangey yellow. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And this is the idea that I wanted for the the uh, you know the painting of the the ride name in the actual concrete itself. Um, I've seen this used a, a couple of places, and you know that over time this would just end up being worn down and it would look rubbish. But it sort of it fits in with this whole new pristine thing. You know they they try things out and everything looks fresh and clean and all of the effects would be working and it's all like their star of their show but then you come back in a couple of years later and this titan probably wouldn't be there anymore and the track would be faded and the steam on the centerpiece wouldn't be working you know all of that typical that typical stuff that's what raygate lake would do um so coming into the gift shop then i i also like how this has turned out like i wanted this to feel a bit more like a shipping container type of shop you know it was just plonked there because they needed to put a shop there and it just serves its purpose but it's ended up being a bit more of a uh, physical structure but it still does look quite temporary so like I, I like how this sits on the sightline it's, it's just perfect um, and there's a, a few things inside that I still need to, to touch up I've added a few things to the snagging list and everything but it's good for now like it, it does it does what it needs to do and then inside you've got all of the photos in the uh, in the actual screens and you've got all of the staff that are, that are waiting there. Um, oh, the staff have come back. I, this is the second take I did this, and the first time the staff were missing from here. And I was like, oh, where did they go? <laughs> but they're here now. Um, so, yeah, they, this is the plaza area. This this is like a, a wide open area. Um, I did want to do this recording. So the reason why this is the second take is the first take had guests in it. And, ah, oh, the frame rate. Even at only 200 guests and only this ride open, it was just, I just couldn't. It's bad enough as it is, so uh, yeah. So I've I've done, I've I've done this area. This is the this is the plaza area, and I like actually that it looks into the station and looks onto the brake front. It gives that that feeling. But if you turn around, you've got the lift hill that's underneath you, and also the zero G as roll as zero G roll as well. So you are literally immersed in it, and it gives the same feels as Centurion does. It gives that I'm in the middle of the ride. Uh, it's almost like it's a winning formula. They would have done it well with Centurion, and they wanted to copy and copy and mimic it. So that's what they've done. Uh, queue line wise, then I've just touched up everything around the outside, uh, made sure that all of the fences line up with each other, made sure that all of the concrete is is all fixed and everything. So that's in there. We've got our disabled entrance, and that's all. Uh, that's all still fitting in there nicely. And then just over in the station, just general tidy up really. So maintenance area has had some touching up done on the on the front and everything uh, i've also done stuff within the station so we've got the ride staff we've got the push points um, and making sure that everything's there and also the activation uh, mechanisms that you need for the transfer track that's all been put on here and on here so that's now all in place and then coming into the actual station as well uh, this is the station so you've got your baggage hold you've got all of your uh, ride booth now finished and all of the lighting and the cctv and every cctv and everything is now is now in here so this is looking awesome like it's looking as bland as i wanted it to uninspired as i wanted it to but while still being actually pretty pretty decent um other thing to show you that i didn't really point out before the fencing along here is along here because you've got a drop so the last thing you want someone to do is to be sitting on the sitting on the wall and they fall off and it's just going to end in tears so you just put some fencing up just to stop people from falling there might actually be some signage please do not climb the fence but there's nothing available for me to for me to use so uh, just decided not to and then around the actual ride area itself then so I didn't really do much with the foliage because it's going to be a new ride. The area would have been recently cleared and the foliage wouldn't have had a chance to grow up yet. So that it wouldn't be overgrown. And where I've tried to incorporate that elsewhere in the park, you know, where it's probably a little bit unloved and a little bit unkempt, this would still be brand new. So uh, you would still, you, your flowers and everything might not have grown necessarily just yet. So I've tried to accent that in some of the, the flower beds and everything. Like down here, you'll see there's none growing at all because it would still be a fresh flower bed. And all of the flowers within the, uh, the actual centerpiece they're all sitting there quite nicely they're all still very tidy because it hasn't had a chance to be overgrown yet so it's this trying to bring through this idea that it's brand new and pristine and still got the wrapper on it's that kind of feeling that, that I'm going for uh, well you know that already because I was talking about it in the last in the last update um, yeah so all of the the flowers and foliage and everything within the ride area itself are still still all settled and all of this out here is going to be in the in the touch-up episode uh, now i know what piece count and everything i've got left um i think i'm going to be able to do some stuff around here with foliage and i'm going to be able to finish off that back uh, that back maintenance area that we did and then over to the uh to the witch's ride it's now called spell round 
you know, because of Spellbound and the ride is round. Oh, come on, guys. That's funny. <laughs> it's really not so cringe. Oh, I, I'm going to leave that in. Uh, yeah, so Spell Round is, is there. Um, and I really like, actually, the spooky pack fences that, that came with the actual pack. It sort of it fits it off quite nicely. It's It just gives that, like, spooky feel, doesn't it? And then I've, all I've done to, to continue that theme is I've carried on the brickwork throughout and then I've just realigned the concrete along the side of the path and then this flower bed wasn't planned um it pro can probably show <laughs> you can probably tell uh, but it's there to hide some serious path misdemeanors that would involve me deleting the path that is quite literally become one piece of path from here to here to here I would have to do the entire path bit all over again and I've just decided not to so no <laughs> it is it is what it is um so yeah but this is this is now looking good i mean it's not a very high prestige ride it doesn't really attract the crowds but it's good as a, it's good as a filler that sits in between the in between the two it now feels like this would have been put in and then uh, tight, uh titan has come along especially when it comes to the to the actual uh, curve the bend here the the wave turn the overbanked wave turn um it just feels like it was shoehorned in it was thumbed into that area they needed to do a quick tight turn there because this ride was already here and it's like how are we gonna bring it round so yeah i like i like how that's how that's turned out and uh yeah that's it that's the that's the view line then from the the guests guest sight line so as you're coming from spyro uh you can see that there's the there's the first drop very domineering i quite like actually how the supports have turned out as well i wasn't too sure about them when i first did them animate uh when i first did them but now actually i quite like i quite like how it looks it's not so dense it makes it makes the track stand out a little bit more so yeah this is the sight line then coming from curse of drakeford manor and you see you can see the the overbank wave turn zero g roll and then the uh, the lift hill in the background, and then coming from the other flat rides, uh, the Thunderer and Co. So it's still looking really, really nice on that on that sightline. It just dominates that sightline quite nicely. And then, do you remember back at the end of um, the Phase Two stuff that I was doing when I said I couldn't wait to to see what the sightline looks like? Well, it looks like that. So we've now got all of our flat rides. We've got the Curse of Drakeford Manor. We've got Titan sitting in the background. We've got Spyro just popping out of the top. We've got all of the other flat rides that are, that are sort of in the background here. The rapids are over in this direction. And it's just finished off that sight line just so nicely. Um, I'm really, really pleased, actually, that this phase... I thought this phase was going, wasn't going to be as good as the other two because the game's starting to slow down interest in the series is starting to wane off and you sort of think oh i'm just doing this to finish the series now you know what how much love how much extra love can i put into this but actually it's turned out exactly uh, in fact better better than i wanted it to so that's uh that's that's that and so guys that's that's the episode that's everything there is to do i've done a pov ride so we're going to go for that in a minute please forgive the the, the the frame rate i mean your frame rate queens amongst you will be hating the fact that it's not 60 fps um but what can you do? The park is massive. It's a million pieces. So trade-offs, unfortunately. Um, I've done the best with the, the tools I can. That's why I emptied the park. Uh, but guys, if you want to know uh, when the next episode is, is coming out, then you know what to do. Sub subscribe and stuff. Uh, because we've got one more touch-up episode to do where I just finish the park for good. Um, I put all of the final touches on and then you guys get your hands on it on the workshop. So that's the exciting bit. You actually get to get to play with it and get, and get to play it. So uh, yeah, I can't wait. So... I reckon we, it's about time to go for a ride. Thank you so much for, for watching. Thank you so much for coming along for the ride. And thank you so much for allowing this to be 26 episodes. This has been awesome, this project. And I can't wait to do the next one. The next one's going to be smaller, I think. I want to do a smaller park. But this ride has been awesome. And it's you guys that are responsible for that. And I can't thank you enough for it. So, without further ado, thank you so much for watching. Please keep yourself safe. You know that routine by now. Let's go for a ride. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.